Oh, hello everyone. Good morning and welcome to breakfast where I will be making hipster toast, or as I like to call it, toast. We've got the avocado, the eggs, the bread, and arguably the most important ingredient, salt. Let's get started. Cue montage. My favorite part, the salt. And the salt obviously comes in plastic, but people are telling me, and by people I mean my friends and people I follow on social media, are sharing headlines that there are little bits of plastic in the salt that eventually gets into my body. In fact, some studies are showing that 90% of salt contains microplastics, which is a little disconcerting if you ask me. I like the food that comes inside the plastic, but I don't really think that plastic should come in the food. All to say, it seems like we have a huge plastic problem. I mean, everywhere I look, there's a plastic problem. There's plastic in the rivers, plastic in national parks, plastic in cities. There are thousands and thousands of pieces of trash literally swirling in the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. And now there's plastic in our bodies. But how bad is the situation? How badly are we addicted to plastic? And if it's that bad, what in the world are we gonna do about it? Hey everyone, I'm Erin, and I'm curious about what the future of the outdoors looks like. Hey everyone, so I just arrived in Chicago. I wanted to see how plastics are affecting some of America's greatest natural resources like the Great Lakes. It's challenging enough not to use plastic when you're traveling, but even when I'm not on the road, I'm learning just how much plastic is involved in every single day of my life. Our lives are inundated with plastic, which is extraordinary when you consider that plastic has only been around for the past century. This material that has incredible durability, that is responsible for so much of modern life and that touches almost every moment of every day, and sometimes we only use it for a brief moment in time, is causing some major problems. And when you really start looking for it, guys, show them your plastic. <laughs> this, is, this is three blocks of plastic. <laughs> and we can't unsee it. Three blocks. You guys wanna get some lunch? Let's talk about how much plastic we are using. Turns out, it's quite a lot. It's hard to quantify exactly how much plastic we are using because it's such a broad category. So let's focus on the biggest culprit, single-use plastic. Nearly a million plastic beverage bottles are sold every single minute around the world. Humans produce almost 20,000 plastic bottles every single second. Worldwide, two million plastic bags are used every minute. And in case you thought the US wasn't a part of this, New Yorkers alone use 23 billion plastic bags every year. And across the US, we use about one bag per person per day. Which is crazy when you consider that on average, one plastic bag is used for just 12 minutes. And our plastic rampage is only increasing with over half of plastic ever manufactured having been made since 2000. Like I said, that is a ton of plastic use, which would be fine, I guess if recycling worked. I hate that we're doing this. Uh, okay, so the bag goes in the trash and then the other stuff goes in the recycling? Or can the stuff the food touch not go in the recycling? I read this, but I don't really know in the moment what to do. So, I'm just gonna do my best and try to separate everything. Okay, we're gonna food there. Oh, I hope this is right. Straws are not recyclable. Sorry. This is, I'm gonna say it is recycled. Okay, this has some sauce on it. This is recyclable. Is it? Wait, yes. What if I do this? Isn't it like a percentage? I 
think you have to wash it. So I have to put this in the trash? It's better to put it in the trash than recycle it. Great Lakes today with the Alliance for the Great Lakes about to do a little trash pickup. I feel confident in reporting that the Great Lakes are in fact great. They account for one whole fifth of the freshwater surface of the planet at six quadrillion gallons. Because of the size, the Great Lakes are often referred to as the nation's fourth coast, but they're living up to that name in some unfortunate ways. I'm Jennifer Caddick. I'm Vice President of Communications of the Alliance for the Great Lakes. One thing that we consistently know after looking at 20 plus years worth of data from our beach cleanups is that consistently about 85% of the litter that volunteers pick up is made wholly or in part of plastic. And so that's really important for us to understand just the scale and size of the plastic pollution problem that we have here on our beaches and what ultimately can end up in our lakes. Let's see how long it takes us to find some trash. We wanted to see how much plastic we could find in five minutes in just this little patch. And this was just the plastic we could see with our eyeballs. I study trash, meaning all sorts of different things that people throw away. Plastic is a term that is really an umbrella phrase that encompasses lots and lots of different kinds of chemicals all the way down to the smallest bits of trash that are, that are microscopic. Most of the plastic in the ocean and the Great Lakes is really hard to see. It's about the size of a grain of sand. And that's where we come back to the salt. Remember, avocado toast. And we start to hear more about that freaky thing, microplastics. Dun dun dun. When you take a quick glance, it doesn't look like there's a lot of uh, litter or pollution here. Um, but once you start looking, people really do find a lot. And one of the biggest things people pick up um, are microplastics, which are pieces of plastic that are broken off of some larger plastic item that has ultimately over time broken into smaller and smaller pieces. Microplastics and microfibers come from everywhere. They are broken off of car tires, fishing nets, carpet in your home, and they are also washed off of our synthetic and even our natural fabrics in the laundry. In fact, by some estimates, a single load of laundry can release hundreds of thousands of what are called microfibers. Researchers have found microplastics in alarmingly high levels in all five Great Lakes. And again, remember, these lakes are our drinking water source for 40 million Americans and Canadians. But we don't know very much about what the impact of that is on human health or on wildlife health. So this is a really concerning problem. While we all may have seen terrible photos of dead seabirds with plastic in their stomachs, experiments are showing that even microplastics can damage animals by blocking digestive tracts, diminishing urges to eat, and altering feeding behavior. That means that even here, where 40 million people get their drinking water and plenty others catch and eat fresh fish, we're ingesting the same plastic that is killing some sea life. But is it harming us? Well, the research isn't quite out on that yet. Some scientists say that it's a low concern, saying there's no health risk to humans, while others say we need more research. We want to know what's out there, where it's coming from, where it's going, and how it interacts with living things along the way. I know we can't solve all of the problems, and, but at least we can be informed about the various degrees and nature of the problem. And we're still at that step. We're still in the beginning. We want to know what's out there. The truth is, plastic comes with a whole assortment of chemicals that can interfere with our health. And that's probably not good for us. You could try to save yourself by buying clean bottled water, uh, but then you're just accumulating more plastic. And a lot of that water is pulled from the same source and has just as much plastic in it. So it just becomes a cycle of creating more of a problem by trying to avoid it. With plastic production set to keep growing until there will be more plastic by weight than fish in the sea, what do we do about it? First, we could use less plastic, and this is possible. Starting personally, I could take a reusable cup to get my coffee or use a reusable water bottle. Obviously, take reusable shopping bags for grocery shopping. I could even carry my own containers for takeout or leftovers. And if I do end up using plastic, I can look up what's recyclable in my local area. Check the label, get it in the right bin, and recycle as much as possible. Second, we could prevent plastic from making it into the oceans and ultimately our food chains. 
One example is this Guppy Friend bag. It helps prevent microfibers from leaving your washing machines, which is one of the main contributors to microfibers in our water. Next, we can make purchases from companies that care. Some companies are starting to own up to their impact and making big changes, like evaluating their supply chain and manufacturing practices, and committing to big goals, like becoming zero waste. When we support companies that care, we are signaling to other companies that they should commit to making a change as well. And finally, if we want to fight this wave of plastics, we can ask our policymakers to make a change. For instance, many states are banning plastics or charging for them, and those policies seem to be working. Even Nepal is banning single-use plastic in the Everest region after they recovered over three metric tons off the mountain. Little stat for you. Denmark uses four single-use plastic bags per person per year, compared to the US, which uses 365. So yeah, I think we could be doing a little bit better. It's very reasonable to look at this problem and be overwhelmed and to feel like you want to throw your hands up and say, this is it. This is a, this is a terrible thing. There's no solution. The scope is just too big. And I understand that reaction. And I think that that's what a reasonable person might think when they look at the scale of the Let's problem. See. But I think there's reason also to believe that we can make improvements. The, the momentum is building towards um, a consensus, a cultural shift about our relationship to plastic. Listen, worrying about your everyday environmental footprint can be exhausting for some, inconvenient for others, and downright unattainable for those who literally can't afford to live without plastic. And if I'm adding something more to your list, it can just feel like a lot of pressure. That's why we need to add some fun in the mix. Thus, I introduce you to my new hobby, plogging. <laughs> Originally called plaga, it combines the words jogging and plaka up, which is Swedish for pick up, and is the newest fitness craze to hit the US. This is real. So let's go for a jog and pick up some trash. everyone, thank you so much for watching. Obviously plastics is a massive topic, but hopefully this gives you an introduction about plastics in general and an introduction to microplastics as well. Uh, we know there's a lot more discussion that needs to happen on the topic of plastics, so please head down to the comments below and let us know what else you'd like to learn. I uh, hope to see you next time.